Nine Effective Habits of Clicker Trainers, Part 3, Criteria. What is a criteria? Almost any aspect of a dog's behavior that requires more of your dog, or the way the dog interacts with her environment, are considered criteria. Some examples include distance, duration, elevation, number of repetitions, visual distractions, and many others. Plan your shaping before training your dog. Write down every step that might lead to the final behavior. Break the behavior down into as many fine criteria as you can. This way, you'll be prepared to adjust your training on the fly if your dog needs more detail. Brainstorm criteria to look for. Knowing what comes next also allows you to move ahead if your dog progresses more quickly than you anticipate. Your dog may not offer what you expect, so be ready to go with the flow for what she does offer. Start training a new behavior in a distraction-free location. Why? Because distractions are another criteria that needs to be separated out and trained separately after the behavior is learned by your dog. Choose a quiet location with no sounds, movement, or tactile stimuli that might distract your dog. Ideally, for a new behavior, the location is a place where the dog is familiar and comfortable. As you can see here, even the wrong location of treats can be distracting. I had to move it several times before I found a place where Jessie could focus on what I was asking. If you're trying to capture a behavior, choose a location that makes it easy for the dog to do the behavior. For example, a small bathroom is boring to a dog and she will soon sit or lie down. Keep your criteria simple so your dog can succeed. Break each step down into smaller steps if needed. Make sure your dog has at least a 50% chance of succeeding. If not, make your criteria easier. I capture the various behaviors that lead to a relaxed state here. Waiting calmly and quietly is an important skill for any dog. Head down. Body bend. Hip shift. Head down with slow eye blink. Here are other behaviors I would accept as needed to shape the calm waiting position. Head dip, since it leads to a head down. I miss a lowered head. Chin on ground between legs. Chin on back leg. I click late for a shift towards laying on her side. Raise only one criteria at a time. Work on distance separately from elevation, duration, etc. before combining them. Here we look at separating distance and elevation. First, I add distance to a paw alert. Next, I train only elevation of the alarm clock. Once they've both been trained, we combine the two starting at a short distance. If she wasn't being successful, I would go back to the distance she could be, then only ask for one more foot in distance and practice there until she was able to get 80% success rate. Good girl. Only then would I ask for more. We work the same process again, changing only the angle of approach. Working the clock is a helpful way to train approaches. Start at 12, move to 1, 2, 3, etc., and work your way around yeah, the pace of the clock. Distance and duration are probably the most commonly combined criteria that need to be split up. First, we work on increasing duration in the exercise pen while being close to me. I reward her while laying down since my criteria is must be laying down. A marker is not used at this point in training as I want to keep her calm. After several sessions of training, you can see how relaxed she is.
The pen is moved further away in increments. This location is after two other intermediate distances. I go back to the start for duration. When you are training one criteria, relax the others. I unknowingly move the pen just beyond her comfort zone. Note she doesn't lie down. I lower my criteria and reward her for staying quiet while standing due to the increased distance. But I stop nearby to see if my proximity will help her relax enough to lay down. She's still uncomfortable. I move the pen back to a distance where she was successful and get her offering relaxed behaviors before I try again. I add the clicker back in because I can use it as a bridge for her to wait for the reward. We do several repetitions at this distance, then train our way through intermediate distances and beyond. Progress at your dog's speed. I am clicking for Jessie to lift my hand with her nose, not hold it or push it onto the arm of the chair. That will come later. As long as she's successful, I start dropping my hand further down in small increments, so she has to lift it further. Doing that causes her to double up. The first pushes up, the second pushes towards me. I keep clicking her progression towards pushing my hand up and towards me. If I insisted that she keep doing more push-ups alone, she might get hung up on that step or get frustrated. So I start clicking for the double push, especially since it results in the final behavior I want. Start training a task from the beginning at each new location. Jesse, step up. I retrain Jesse through the steps needed to retrieve an object off the ground and place it in my lap while I'm in a wheelchair. Step up. She has already successfully learned this task inside the house and in the backyard. First I cue her to step up on step the chair up. in stages. Next, I add the keys and start over. Good girl. Each new place you retrain, you'll find that the process goes more quickly. Good girl. There you go. Very nice, Jess. Good girl. Each dog varies in how many different locations you need to train in before they start generalizing the behaviors needed to complete a task. If in doubt, start from the beginning and progress at your good dog's girl. speed until yeah. the task is complete. Very good job. Choose environments that add distraction criteria one at a time. We practice our healing u turns with a table saw blaring about 15 feet away to the left of the camera. Continuous sounds can be easier to ignore than unpredictable ones. It can be a good idea to start with them first. An unexpected yell from a small group of teens at the top of our driveway gets only a little glance from Jessie. Yeah, good girl, Jess. That was awesome. Good girl. The tarp is an unfamiliar surface for Jessie. After getting clicked for just walking on it, we try practicing some simple healing moves. In the beginning, she gets clicked for just trying. No precision is required. I just increased the criteria, so we go back to just walking on it. To improve speed of response, called latency, after a behavior is trained, click and reward only the fastest 8 out of 10 responses.